You're with Pastor Troy right here. We're getting excited. We got a special program for you. You're going to be seeing over the next few weeks until we get ready for season two, you're going to be seeing the best of the On the Dock season one. These will be coming at you hard and steady. I want you to get them out there, check them out, help us get them out to your friends. We want to see you on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes as well. But this is the best of, get this, the best of season one. Get ready for it. We're going to be coming at you with a super season two coming up this August. We'll see you soon. Enjoy this episode of On the Dock season one. Best of. here you're with pastor troy and the gang here don't you love that intro mother beth i love that intro that on the dock there it's our own recording with our own studio ben odellini i, I always say odellini that's how it is in heron but Haley says it's Odellini, so I'll try it just for this episode. I don't know if I can stick with it. But Ben Odellini is part of the team. Lucas Winkler, Dustin Griffin recorded our own version. Our, our, we call it the Memphis Dirty Blues version of On the Dock. Hey, at On the Dock here, thanks for joining us. We're all about conversations to propel your faith out of the shallows and into the deep. Thank you for joining us. You have found us already, but we have multiple platforms to podcast. We're on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Facebook, Roku. If you ever go to Roku TV, download the SermonNet app and look for on the dock with pastor troy channel we're also on rumble and download that great app sermonette you can find our archives on the sermonette and on youtube as well and you can check us out that way we also have uh, social media partners facebook instagram i don't know how to use instagram i have one but i don't know how to use it but send me an instagram teach me telegram and twitter we'd love to hear from you hopefully we'll have some more social media partners real soon when you find our social media partners go to them and hit subscribe like and notify and and share comments we'd love to hear from you we put on the dock out every tuesday and Thursday, new telecasts go out. So if you're subscribed and hit notify, every time they go out, you'll hear about it and you can keep up and be a part of the On The Dock team. And by the way, if you want to be a part of us at On The Dock, you can go be a Patreon sponsor at Patreon. You can become an On The Dock partner, both a partner and sponsor. Check that out. You might get one of these fancy coffee cups that are on our desk here. And if you want to find out more about these things, go, on to, go to our website at onthedock.org. You can find our embedded viewer as well as access points to our platforms and to our Patreon app. Haley here is actually the designer of that website. So she's our creative arts person here at Community Faith Church, but has dual tasks and we'll introduce her properly in a minute. If you have any other questions, you can email us. You can email us at info at on the doc.org. Donna Kranuski, our direct executive producer, would love to talk with you and she'll fill, send us questions, answers, anything, so we can get you the information you need to be a good on the dock listener. So, so we're so glad to have you here. We're fixing to tee up an incredible thing. Let me just go around the table and welcome my co-host, Today, to my right is the beautiful mother of my children, the grandmother to one grandchild. The rest of our kids are unproductive still. So far, we're waiting on one of them. I encouraged one of our granddaughters today to get more productive. One of our, our daughter-in-laws, we need you to get productive. I put her on the spot every time. I Audible just pray. Size. Yes, yeah. you know, I want to have a quiver full. And so to my right is Mother Beth. Beth, welcome to On the Dock again. Lovely okay. co-host. Hey, we have a special one over in the far seat. And Ruth Jane Subicket. Hello. I, did I get it right, Jane? Yes, that was I, perfect. Oh, man, I'm getting better at it. Ruth is hails from Boston, Massachusetts that's via right. Singapore. That's right. That's like a, that's a serious distance from Singapore to Harvard. And she is a guest co-host with us for several series we're going to be doing. And uh, her little focus at Harvard College where she attends, just a little backward school, kind of low-level <laughs> people that go to it, you know. Harvard. She goes to Harvard and she is studying right in the wheelhouse of what we're going to be talking about in these series. So she, you're going to hear a lot from her. Uh, we've got her here just to kind of grind on us and we're going to love it. We're going to love to hear what she has to say. So Ruth, welcome to On the Dock. We're glad to have you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Oh man. we here, Here's the show. Here's the show, Ruth. The Mosaic Initiative. We're going to be doing a series on this, multi-part series. We're going to be talking about today the work of the Mosaic Initiative will be in part one. And we have none other across the table for me in the guest hot seat today is Haley Ottolini in, in Heron. Ottolini? 
Haley Odellini, she's the executive director and the founder of the Mosaic Initiative. She is the creative arts director for Community Faith Church. Uh, she is a blessing. She is actually the art designer for the work of On the Dock as well. Her husband built this beautiful set, you know, this table is, is his work. She gave up many nights so he could be up here doing Lots this. Lots of sawdust in Lots of house. sawdust <laughs> in your house so he could do that. And so we really appreciate that. But Haley's here not as a co-host today. She'll be back on some other shows to co-host with us. But today she is in the in the seat, not of the scoffer, but in the seat of the blesser today. Uh, she's going to tell us. The hot seat. The hot seat. So we're glad to hear, have you, Haley. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing more about your wonderful new young 501c3 NGO and uh, we're excited about that. So welcome, Haley, to On the Dock. Thank you. I'm super excited and extremely well, excited to be here uh, with Ruth and hear more about what she's doing, too. I know. Ruth's, Ruth's learning and some counting stuff. Counting down the days. Hey, and we're going to get her. <laughs> Ruth's going to be here for a couple different casts we're going to do. We're going to be doing uh, this cast. We're going to be doing another cast with Tamar Center. It's going to be incredible. It's our Zoom. It's the first time we're using Zoom, and we're excited about that. And then then Ruth, when we're all said and done, we're not left letting Ruth flew into Southern Illinois Airport on the nine-seat crop duster this morning. It was an experience of her lifetime, you know. It really was. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like those Singapore Airlines it's coming over, bike. luxury. You get on the thing, the guy gives you the well, propeller yeah our, our son caleb flew that thing out one time and they got to the end of the runway so like give you the safety check and the guy opens the door and closes it and says yeah if we if we lose cabin pressure we're going down just want you guys to all know for a fact i am jumping out i feel it's much safer for me trying to land on my feet than it is landing crashing in this aluminum can and caleb said that made him really feel good you know yeah that really gives you a vote of confidence yeah right so there. yeah so we, we put jane through that but jane did it good she looked brave ruth Oh, Ruth, I'm sorry. I knew you were going to do that. I got hooked up on mistake, Jane Suffolk. I'm sorry. No, no, people do that all the time. Did they call you yeah, Jane? Focused on yeah, that. it yeah. happened just I'm a sorry, couple Ruth. weeks ago on a webinar thing I was doing. I can it happened do it. at my high school graduation, I'm pretty sure. I've never <laughs> called you Ruth to this morning. Now Jane's fixated in my mind. All right, well, praise God. <laughs> all right, well, I'm glad you're flexible. Thank you so much for that. And, you know. Gosh, she's already grading me bad. <laughs> what happens, Harvard? I went to Emory. I went to I went to Southern Ivy. We had we don't have Ivy leaves. We just have a, like a piece of Ivy. A piece so, of uh, yeah, Ivy. I went to Southern Methodist and Emory. Southern Ivy schools. That's how we make our feel semi semi real. But uh, we're excited. <laughs> Haley, can you tell us? Let's just get started here. Tell yeah. us a little bit about you. First of all, I, I want to hear okay. a little bit about you, and I want to hear a little bit about your family and your background, so if you my would. My family and my background. So I am a wife to Ben, as you've said before. He also works here at the church and has been a co-host. Um, he's a worship leader here. He's a worship leader. Yeah, he's a worship leader. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's, that's he, important, he, too. Yeah, that, no, it's a good, he's, a, he's yeah. like my, I mean, he's, gosh. He's, he's like, our uh, comic relief, our yeah. worship leader, <laughs> and yeah, a lot of things. Um, and then I am also the mother to two very energetic but beautiful uh, toddlers. And Just for the record, I have picked. Okay, I wasn't going to show this till the next episode, but but because you said that, I'm going to bring your family photos up right now. Early, there you go. Can you? There you go. Check that. Look at these beautiful photos. Oh, I mean, are yeah, uh, Ruth? Are these not beautiful or what? No, they're gorgeous. I mean, she's. I mean, they're like they're like celebrities. They could be like in like a magazine. <laughs> I mean, look at this. They're in black and white. This they're is why Zion likes you so much. Their oh. family is just black mm -hmm. and white. They, Haley's not really a person of color. She's just black and white. <laughs> that's, I, that's I love so black. And, don't black and white photos just make you look beautiful? I think Ben owns maybe two colored shirts as well, right. so we're pretty Ruth, neutral. Zion, yeah. the, the little one in the front, uh, top right, mm -hmm. she's my buddy. So we hang together. We watch the B movie, you know, oh, Disney yeah. B movie. And he yeah, gives them the, the classics. Classics. He gives the them lots of cookies. Lots of cookies. I we go in and raid the kitchen and get stuff. So they're my buddies. They now every time we are at the church, they ask to go in to use the restroom at Pastor Troy's house because they think they'll emerge with. They're going to get stuff. Snack. They're going to get stuff. If we have stuff. Yeah, I've they can't come out here with vanilla. Just I'll give them whatever. And Zion is what we, she's not a black and white girl. Like she likes full blown color sequins. She Luca always has pretty dresses girl. on. You're, you're, yes. you're the girls. So you've got great family there. Yeah. And so Haley, Haley, tell us about becoming the founder of this project mm. that you want to call or, or a movement called the Mosaic Initiative. Can you, can you give me a, can you flesh yeah, that yeah. out a little bit for us? So I'll probably start by um, sharing like our mission is that we combat sex trafficking and exploitation locally and globally. And we do that through um, facilitating coalition, um, 
spreading of awareness and the development and distribution of resources. So I'm gonna bring that screen up for you. I, yeah, I, I, I it's a little you, wordy. There you go. No, 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 no. I this is the this is your full mission statement, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but I've noticed that on Facebook, you've tagged it down to combat uh, combating. On Facebook, you say com combats here, but combating sex trafficking ex and exploitation. Ex exploitation. I say locally, globally, and globally, because interestingly enough. Some people don't include I know, the locally I know. with the globally. But when you say globally, um, you mean all of us, right? I, I do mean so locally and globally, Only in yeah. Marion, Illinois. But here they here see it as Here you more have to say locally and globally because mm -hmm. they go, I don't want to go overseas. Yeah. Oh, and Ruth, overseas is not Singapore. Overseas <laughs> is across the Mississippi like, River. Yes. Okay. Anything. Yeah. Got it. Other side of St. Louis is overseas. Yes. Yeah. And I yeah. grew up in the Midwest. And so um, I think a lot of people in my town had really not even left like their area so their mm -hmm. like scope of reference is quite small so right. yeah um, when you tell me you're from singapore they're yeah. thinking that's got to be some sort of drink or something like they, that. yeah you know, they get, probably wouldn't be able to place yeah, it yeah right right yeah. yeah so this is a good so this is the larger version of that here and yeah. then and then you said it's it's you're partnering you're also partnering with organizations ministries yes. individuals go ahead and yeah so um like one of the main goals and like the largest heart of our organization um was to um, kind of create like a community of different anti-trafficking existing anti-trafficking organizations um to help uh one foster that community but really uh, set like a standard of excellence in our field um just by like increasing the networking and communication because there we do see a lot of um reinventing the wheel and in a field that's severely under resourced um, for the people who are actually in the trenches. That's a large part of like, so the idea what here is a little to bit do. to help provide some cross pollination. Yes, people aren't having yeah. to reinvent the wheel. We kind of want to be the table at which like people can come to and um, create that collaboration. If you see something going really good here, if you get yeah. that out there, other yeah. people How can do learn we take from it. That? Yeah, they you know they talk about uh, in in education. They talk about you know you know the learn the learning curve. You mm -hmm. you you could help organizations by giving best yeah. from different ones elevate their learning curve a lot yeah. faster that way i think the older you know it goes both direction too like we have like these older organizations that have been you know existing 16 years and they're um really experts in specific areas um but then some of the new grassroots organizations that have that like fire and that vision and new innovation like they can really learn a lot from each other one from the experience of the groups that have been there before them but then right to like what are the newer um strategies and uh like how do we best combat this and and really um like i think our heart really was to create um opportunity for all the church to be involved in anti-trafficking efforts um, because we're all the body of christ so if your hand be a hand if your foot be a foot and it really just expands the capacity of the organizations so yeah um so that's that's what we do. Um, how I got there is a little. Um, it, it's been a, a a journey over years of God, you know, just kind of creating that um, passion and desire in my heart through a bunch of different situations. But I can't pinpoint the exact moment that I learned about that trafficking existed. But it definitely um, has stuck with me. It's something that I've been just even like self education for probably the last. 12 plus years since probably high school is when I started really reading and learning about it. There wasn't mm -hmm. quite as much out there about it at that point. Right. Um, but in college was when I really started getting interested in it. And so I started doing all of my papers on trafficking because I was bored of what I was doing in class. I was wanted to learn about this so badly, but there was no one to teach me. So I was like, I'll just do all of my papers on, on traffic. trafficking. That's probably what got Ruth in trouble. Yeah, that's what got Ruth to Harvard in this in this track. Similar. Can, can you relate to that? Can that? you relate to what she's saying? I'm. I think in a sense, maybe not trafficking specifically, but I think since high school, like being really aware of different human rights issues. I think for me, learning about like domestic workers in Singapore right. or something mm -hmm. grew up a lot around. Yeah. We had like a foreign worker ministry in my church, and so. Yeah. I, I think I, I think I, I'm gonna throw this in, and then you let, I don't want to stop you. I want you to keep going because you're doing great. Uh, I I you know. 20 years ago for us, 30 years ago, abortion was the main issue. The thing Christians were mm -hmm. getting out and champion and we still need to be champions of pro-life. So we are, right. I mean, that's, that's unresolved. And then, you know, 15, 20 years ago, we started into uh, marriage and, and, and different kinds of marriage and which marriage we'll do and not. And that was the battleground uh, for the church. It seems like the modern battleground for the church right now, where the church was being called today is the whole area of human trafficking. Yeah. And because the whole field is so big, 
And I can see why a group organization like the Mosaic coming in and doing some networking c connections, especially in the sex trafficking, which is a subset. We'll talk about that in a minute. I can see why that's valuable because every organization we run into, Hands of Hope does, our foundation, our church does, we do work overseas. When we run into them, everybody's so niched. Everybody's mm -hmm. kind of doing their own thing, pulling their own plow, but they don't really know what's going on one block later. Yeah. Because the issue is so big, so global yeah. so it's got a flay every country you can read this i just read the 600 page report just one piece of it and yeah. it's got reports on like all these countries and it's like 632 pages of reports it's my and favorite so report to, to network this and learn from each yeah. other just that would be a challenge so yeah so go ahead sure. i'm sorry well like i was sharing earlier i like to kind of um compare especially if people are starting to learn about trafficking one it can be a little overwhelming because there's so much information about like out Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of like kind of competing information too, because this, when, anytime you get into like statistics about criminal activity, you're going to have like varying numbers. And a lot of it's like, not to say guesswork for greater sense of, or lack of sense of term. I, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to really gauge like how prevalent it is and everyone's like observations and estimates tend to be pretty different. So you're going to get different information from different places. Um, but I do compare it to kind of like the medical field. It's a really big, really big topic. Um, and I think when you find like experts, they're usually experts in a specialized area of trafficking, whether that, like, um, and like, I appreciate that about like, I know the paper you're writing is specifically focused on, tra on uh, Thailand. And that's almost very necessary um anytime you're trying to really learn well not just thailand but but u.s church partnerships US church with Thailand. so <laughs> yeah, it's, thailand. it's very banded yes. but 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 there's there's a thousand more flavors like that out yes. there you could have chosen and right? that's what you'll find in a lot of the resources that do exist they're so pinpointed um which is great but a lot of the organizations that are creating resources or are involved in anti-trafficking efforts are so busy and so overworked um, and under resourced that they really don't even have a chance to like, like they're literally in to the come trenches, up and breathe and look to around, come up and look around and see that there's someone in the trench with you, like right over right. there. It's, it's challenging. Well, and, 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 and they've gotten better at it. Cambodia actually has a really had a great organization that we kind of tried to like follow suit after. And they kind of tried to unite all of the anti-trafficking groups in Cambodia, but there are there's so many small areas that they just don't know about each Daniel, other. Daniel's working with the the Asia traffic uh, thing. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that when we do Tamar Center. But they're trying to pull those together. There is yeah. some success with that. But I think it's like a fire hose trying to drink out yeah. of. And also, when you come out of the of the trafficking issues, the problem is it's so, it's not just busy, but it's so depressing to your spirit and soul. Yeah. When you do get a moment of free time, the last thing you want to do is talk to somebody else about it. You really just want to try to scrub your eyes and brain from it. So it's very frustrating. Yeah. And I think, um, specifically in the faith community, we have like a unique opportunity, um, to talk on this level. Um, but I do think, you know, something that you don't see in like maybe the secular area is the, uh, but even, even those in that field tend to acknowledge some level of spiritual oppression that goes along with it because it's such a dark No, no, thing. It, it, there's, it's, it's not a, some oppression. It's a lot. It's absolutely yeah. a demonic yeah. realm that we're dealing with. It yeah. is. And, and, and I know a lot of people that are involved in are just self secular humanists. So they're not thinking, well, I'm possessed by the devil, but it, it is what's happening when you destroy people's souls way, the way trafficking does, it is a spiritual sacrifice of somebody's life. Yeah. Whether the person knows they're doing it by omission or commission. And then, and then when you watch it, if you're a pastor like me and a father, I'm a father of two daughters. I've got a granddaughter. When I'm in Patia and I see men, not my age, men 70, 80, 90 years of old that should be in nursing homes with, 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 with AIDS, I see them with a Thai girl moving them around. I mostly just want to stop, the, stomp their brains into a mud hole and in their existence. So yeah. I have to really work hard to cool myself down. So I, so I can see why people working in trafficking, I'm kind of at, at a church level yeah. and, and it's, it, but I can't imagine being in the pits of it, pulling people out yeah. and knowing what's really going on. So I don't know how the teams maintain themselves, let alone collaborate. So that's where I think what you're doing is a very yeah, valuable thing. I think it's, um, it's amazing work and I'm always inspired by those that I meet that have dedicated their life to it. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a lack of uh, like self care just because there's not a lot of opportunity to even have time for that. 
Yeah, right, field. right. So there's a lot of burnout. Yeah, and that's what I saw. The PTSD has got to be phenomenal. Yeah, there's a lot. That would be a whole nother study. You know what yeah, I mean? Just, secondary trauma is a real thing. And, I'm, not talking and, about, yeah. I'm not talking about just the girls and the boys that come through it. I'm talking about the, the workers, workers, the yeah, workers yeah. that are in the battle zone. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like the war guys go over and fight a war and they come back with yeah. all the stress from what's happened in the war. Right. Well, and like, you know, there's a lot of survivor led movement as well. And so, you know, there's a lot of triggering things that can oh, happen. Absolutely. And also, you know, secondary trauma is a real thing. You even see that with like foster families walking through the things with their children. Right. You see that here. And that's something I've had to like actively um, seek out people that can relate to some of the things that I, like I get disclosures of sexual abuse or trauma probably every time I say what I do. Yeah. And that's been something like a learning curve do, for me. Don't you think everybody knows those a things in a Don't you think way. everybody yeah. knows a story? Uh, yeah. You know, and yeah. what's funny is usually the story was left us overseas or maybe in this sh no, shady yeah. or maybe this shady neighborhood in the past. But my wife and I just stopped at a truck stop coming home this week from St. Louis, pulled in, and there was a team set up there brokering deals mm -hmm. in the in, in the was that Sesser Loves Truck Stop. I'm just gonna say where it was. And they're there working deals in the parking lot. So yeah. it's not something that's no. just in Singapore or Thailand or or some other place around the globe. It's right here in southern Illinois, active and alive in yeah, our communities. Absolutely. Right? Correct? And especially if you have any presence of drug in your community. You have yes. trafficking because you're going to traffic children, yeah. to maintain. They, they yeah, can, because if you put people in desperate situation, like pe when people are in desperate situations, especially like here, I think you see it a lot more by family members because right. of the opioid crisis. So, so drugs, drugs so will lead you into trafficking yeah. to to maintain the habit, but then traffickers will also do drugs to be able to tolerate the the, yeah. the addition. There's just got to be a tremendous yeah, terrible a vortex of destruction drugs in the industry yeah. for sure well i think and even as like just like coping mechanisms i mean like yeah um, and locally here a lot of uh people that are involved in drugs are trafficking their own children that's yeah that's what i was trying to say yeah. so um you see that a lot where okay hang on this sound is my head <laughs> hitting the microphone yeah, I know. yeah. the, the, the yeah. concept of traffic your own children it it i know you guys are all out there listening look listen this is pastor troy the doc listen listen I know you think I've got Ruth here who's from Singapore around the world and we're going to talk about Thai trafficking, but this is happening right here in Marion Heron. It's happening right here, actively right now. It's not something overseas fantasized right. about. We're going to talk heavily about stuff overseas, but what we're talking about should let you take the pressure off, but it's happening around us. Yeah. Yeah. So one of my, one, just to give you an example of a story, like one of Send my, kids. Uh, give me a break friends who's an emergency <laughs> worker in town. And I won't give too much details cause it's not my story to share, but, um, just to, to give you an idea of what can happen here is there, there was a young, I've heard stories of a young boy recently that came into the ER and had, um, severe like trauma wounds uh -huh. very clearly from sexual abuse. And, I mean, he's younger than my children. Oh my goodness! My, my child, my oldest is four. Right. So, um, and he was being sold by his adoptive father at the truck stops. Yeah, and that's in our county. Um, so that's here in yeah. Williamson County. Yeah, so it's it's happening here. I'm naming where we are because I don't want to be confused. Also, so I'll make a a quick, and we'll probably get into this in a little bit. But Absolutely. there is a difference between so like trafficking um, really involves more of a commercial component. Um, like an exchanging of goods or funds or services or right. some sort of exchange of benefit. Um, but also, like, I think it'd be neglectful not to n mention that there's ongoing sexual abuse and it's super prevalent yes. in our area. Yes. Um, and especially, like, I mean, you can see the amount, like, our county has more foster children, I believe, than most counties mm -hmm. in our state. So there so, is a tangent, there's a separate issue. Yeah. There's tangential and the, and connections. Yeah. As well. Whether they were abused before the foster care system or after they, they are high, high, like foster children, their risk factors are a lot higher for, for sexual abuse. Um, mm -hmm. and that's what I get a lot of disclosures of. So I, the thing I hear probably the most at churches is, yeah, that's so awful. It's gotten so much worse from then when I was a kid. And, and I'd like to speak to that because almost every time I speak at a church or with people, I have women who are f about 50 between 50 and yeah. 65 years old, come up to me and tell me they were abused for nine years by a neighbor, by their father, right. by their grandfather. And they've never once been able to share that. Right. And so I don't think that it's necessarily more prevalent. I do think it's more accessible because of online, yes. like, um, and how things have grown. And it's really hard to gauge whether that's 
it's happening more or if it's just more accessible. But I will say that this is not something new. It's not something that just no. started. And I know like there's this tendency to look back at like the olden days and think that things were so much better or it wasn't happening, but I just don't think it was talked about okay, and women okay. haven't had that. Okay. I'm going to put a pin on that because we're, right. we're, we're, we'll get too deep here. And this is the first one. I've got pins in it. Trust me here. Pins. But, but, but got it. pins in it because, <laughs> because people say, well, this didn't happen. I totally agree with you. It was hidden. Everybody's phone mm -hmm. is a camera now. Everybody's phone records. Every mm -hmm. house has a ring camera on it. We see, we learn, we do everything. All this stuff was able, you were able to get lots of anonymity in the past. And and, and authorities didn't take reports from certain people. They didn't listen to certain people. And so I believe this has been always happening. I do think the access to pornography, which is a, to me is the gateway drug. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a gateway drug to trafficking. I, 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 Ruth, is that kind of what you're seeing so far? to sexual trafficking i mean i think so pornography exploit the well, the, the, yeah. the ability of it yeah and i think i mean we can talk about this at a later right. time but last summer i was working with international justice mission with their team in the philippines and speaking of awesome. parents yeah, love selling their children um you know a big issue there that they're working on is OSEC, which is the online sexual exploitation of children and normally the people who are selling their children online through I mean, it can be through websites like yeah. Facebook. Facebook. It can be through like, yeah. you know, WhatsApp or Snapchat. whatever. Snapchat. Yeah, yeah exactly. It. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's all to customers in the West or, you know. Okay. So, so, and we are going to come back to that heavily later, but, yeah, but, 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 cause that's, I love what you're saying there, but here, here, here's, here's the sick part of it. The sick part of it is because pornography is no longer at that store in the back of the place where only raunchy people go right now. It's on every phone. Everybody yeah. can get every kind of known, every kind of deprived type stuff you can ever think about is available to you. There's only a so amount of, so much time that somebody digs into that at some point in time, it's going to move beyond what is the stuff that the anime in Japan that, that Megan used to like until oh, she, yeah. what's it called? Um, the anime that she used to, the, the, Oh, come on. What's that? Can't tell. But there's a whole anime over there that, and you find when we were over there in Japan, we were in the store. She was so excited about getting the, the the comic books that were over there, and she went into Tokyo store, and then she looked around, and it was nothing but perverted men in there buying the stuff, mm -hmm. and it was like one step. It was like comic pornography. It, she wasn't looking at that. She was looking at different styles. Megan was, but but they were in that section. Right, but the stores were. Yeah, that's I, grown I can't, a lot. I can't, I, I can't read bills. No, bills are our our developer day. Yeah, hentai. Yeah, and so so it's like a window. I figure though that the the ability of online stuff and the access has created that gateway drug. It's like the marijuana for today. Everybody smokes that, but now it's not doing it for them. So now I need to find that local organization, that person that can deal with me, somebody. And so it, it becomes a gateway to actually living it out through some sort yeah. of actual treatment. It builds on fantasy and and it, it begins to not be enough. Yeah. And they look for that. Now they're going to the parking lot. They're going to this place, that place. And and it's like the rule of firsts. They say that like psycho, like physiologically, like neurological pathways are formed more strongly by connections of your first experience of something. Mm -hmm. So I think when you have eight, nine, 10 year olds, like I hear that all the time when I talk to friends who were addicted to pornography, whether mm -hmm. that's females or males, because right. it's right. definitely both something ways. that- It's definitely both, both ways. ways now. Yes. And females and males are both perpetrators too, you know? Yes. But they were e either introduced through their, like, you know, sexual abuse, maybe they were like introduced that way, or they stumbled upon it because of like the access on online. And a lot right. of times it's pretty violent what they stumble upon. Oh and if my. that's your first engagement with a sexual encounter is watching something that's produced, People are on high like mm -hmm. amount of painkillers. It's not like at all real. Like it's not realistic. This is not a relationship. And you start this getting is not addicted any, to yeah. it. And studies and it have shown that it actually it. yes. Yeah. And it also like normalizes. Um, well, not normalizes, but there's been studies to show that it actually um, changes the brain, changes the chemical balance of the your brain because right it up. it uh, releases dopamine just like like a hardcore. And drug, it creates like, people that right. can't have a Cocaine, normal, heroin. healthy, regular relationship. Yeah, they, they it's become really sad, they actually. become falsely stimulated. Hey, l l let me do this. Let me let me drive us back up a little bit. We're gonna get deeper in this, yeah, guys. It, guys hey, this nervous. on the dock. This is gonna be a tough, tough thing. But right off the bat, if you're dealing with problems with pornography, guys, listen to me, guys. I, I know there's girls out there. The girls can speak to you. You need to get off that. You have got to get off that. You got to get. You got to get in church. You got to get with the pastor. You got to get with the somebody hold you responsible and, and and get off that that's just a gateway to doing more things you're only going to be able to stay on fantasy island so long and then you're going to do something that 
that even perpetuates it because the more people, the more of that you watch, the more women are exploited to make mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, you're going to be not just exploiting them by sp by spending clicks on it. You're actually going to be doing it yourself. So you're yeah. you're almost like victim, and then you're going to go to the next level of victimhood. So pull yourself out of that in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to be set free from that. And feel free if you want mm -hmm. somebody to pray with you, feel free to email us at info at on the doc .org. We would love to pray with you and commit with you. Absolutely. And I, I would be glad to talk with you about that or get you in contact with somebody. So let me let me come back real quick. For Haley, I want to stay at the top level yeah, here. Yeah. I, I went on your website. I thought you did a beautiful job with this. You said the Mosaics Initiative's passion for this project was born from a desire for God's glory to be shown through serving mm -hmm. others and the weaving together of the body of Christ. You wrote that really well. And you state, quote this, we believe learning from each other's wisdom can greatly benefit all organizations involved. I think absolutely. Our heart is to empower each individual organization in their God-given strengths and giftings and connect them with others to collaborate. Love that. By doing so, we may increase each of our capacities to better serve those affected by sex trafficking and more effectively fight exploitation. We want to help strengthen organizations that are paving the way and help those following in the footsteps to grow. Our team truly believes this is not just our heart, but it's also the heart of the Lord. So I wanted to ask you that question all for the reason that saying here, you know, that I can hear that in your heart. I can hear that in your desire. It's almost like you're, you're trying to stop though an ocean. Yeah. So, so, it feels like that a lot. so, so, but, but, the, but the work you're trying to do is just amazing. So let me transition this. Cause I think we got to get these variables in. We've got about eight minutes here and I want to make sure that we lay a good foundation to get into this deeper discussion. Cause when we're talking about human trafficking, uh, sexual abuse, sex trafficking, there's some language here that you have put forth. That's I think really good. And I want to make sure that we, we work on our language and understanding the systems that are involved and that we get good, good conversation about this. So first of all, human trafficking, you, you on, on your website, taken right from the mosaic initiative website, and we'll give you information on that in a minute. You, you, you define human trafficking. Actually, you don't define it. The UN does. The yeah. UN does. This is from the United Nations article three, paragraph a of the protocol to prevent, suppress and punish traffickers in pr trafficking in person. There, there may be like a, an even newer version of this, yeah. but I think it pretty well, like, so, so is if, the generalized, I agree. Definition. So if you're involved, listen to me, if you're involved in the recruitment, the transportation, the transfer, the harboring, harboring or receipt of persons by means of threat or use of force or other forms of coercion of abduction, of fraud, of deception, or of the abuse of power or of a position of vulnerability or of the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person, having control over another person for the purpose of exploitation, exploitation shall include at a minimum, the exploitation of the prostitution of others. And we're not talking about just sex here. Prostitution is using other people, whether it's for labor or a lot of things, or other forms of sexual exploitation, forced labor or services, slavery, which is happening today. There are more people slave now in mm -hmm. this world than have been at any other time in the world. When you study that, there are more people in slavery now than in slave times of this country and even back in the biblical times. So, so it says uh, it includes forced labor of services, slavery or practices similar to slavery, servitude, or the removal of, listen to this, of organs. Sickening. Yeah. So, so that's your definition there. And let me give you one other definition, and I'm going to have you flush it out, and then we'll get Ruth here and get you guys to expand on it a little bit. Then sex trafficking is the subset we're looking at. So right? Human trafficking is a big set. A subset of that is sex trafficking. And that's a certain kind of brand inside it. And you define on your website, sex trafficking is a form of human trafficking subset. It is the specific exploitation of a person for the purposes of a sexual nature. And sex trafficking can look different dependent, uh, dependent it can be different dependent on the culture and context, but in every context, the outcome is the same. Exploitation of the vulnerable by persons in power. This is oppression. This is a modern day slavery. Yeah. So. Um, flush it out. Yeah, well. In some ways there. Back, That's but, a bad way to say that. Yeah. Don't flush it out, but tell us yeah. what it means. Um, and not to jump back, but uh, I did progress like in my in my journey to where I am now, um, from writing co like college papers, um, then to working for a, a missions organization, creating some curriculum for them, got even more interested in it. Um, and then actually worked for a group called the covering house, which is out of uh, St. Louis working with minors coming out of sex trafficking. I was a youth development specialist with them. Um, love my girls, miss it dearly. Um, but we, we, uh, ended up having a baby and moving out of that. And I also just saw a lot of need for resources in this area. And that's kind of where now 
where I am now. So I have a little bit of experience. I wasn't in the field working directly with um, survivors for crazy long, but long enough to really um, get my foot in the door and uh, I learn a lot from them. Definitely don't know everything, but I'm learning every day. So yeah, uh, human trafficking and sex trafficking, you hear used interchangeably a lot. Um, yeah, but, I used to always think they're the same yeah. thing. I think and a lot I'm realizing, of people do. I, I realize that human trafficking includes sex trafficking. Yeah. But we, I always think of that first. I forget about abused labor, people that yeah. are being brought into indentured servitude forcefully in other ways. I mm-hmm. forget, there, there's so much of it going on, but we are focusing here. Yeah. The mosaic's focusing primarily on sex trafficking. on the sex yeah. trafficking, yeah. yeah. Because even, even within that, like sex trafficking is still a huge area. Um, and so... Yeah, that's that's where we specifically focused on. Although, can, um, can I ask a question? And this, and Ruth, Ruth, you're an expert in this field here today around the table. I I know. We, when you say sexual exploitation, there are going to be some women that are going to say, "It's my body. I can do what I want with it. If I want to sell it, I can sell it." Do you define prostitution? Just simple. Let's. I don't know what's simple about it. But but prostit is prostitution different? I realize prostitution is included. Is it different than sexual trafficking or is all prostitution sexual trafficking? You know what I'm saying? You're diving I, in deep here. Well, I don't okay. want to stay deep on it no, long, but, but no, we can no. come back to it. So there's there's typically the two schools of thought in our field. I don't, mm-hmm. Do you want to take this one? <laughs> no, go, go for it first. So there's, so there's two schools of thought. Um, there's definitely groups that are more um, of the thought that it can be empowering and if we can achieve like safe environment for women – um, that it's, they define them differently. Well, Vegas, um, Vegas regulates I think it. For me, I mean, Las Vegas regulates it. There are countries that regulate yeah. it. So, so I think, see, I think the key piece here is coercion. Um, and, and what you're working. Yeah. With so I think especially in the secular world and even in the Christian world, we really want to draw this line between prostitutes and victims. Look, I, first of all, I don't want anybody of any nature going out and getting any prostitute. We're, we're against that and on the dock. So we're not justifying that. No. No, we're no, just no. trying to define yeah. the sex trafficking. Does that yeah, include yeah. people that are so, that are at a, Vos, at, a, at a Las Vegas place where they're working under the state and all that doing that? We're trying to, yeah. I'm just trying to get definition and, so, and language. So sex workers, um, there's, a, there's a big movement right now to say that that's like empowerment. Um, but just even from like, a more studious background. Like if you look into more like research on it, um, I actually recently wrote a piece for another organization, a blog post about how um, sex work is actually exploitive in nature. Um, It's the only occupation in which you're going to be willing to accept that many risks uh, like of job, like um, occupational hazards such as STDs, sexual abuse, sexual harassment. Um, there was a study, it was done quite a while ago, but I think it was, there's different studies. I think they're somewhere and I'll have to, I'll have to find them and send them half it next time. Um, between like 80 to 95% of, um, sex workers are pimp controlled and that would be a formal coercion. It's just another term for trafficker. Right. It's just more accepted. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think, yeah, it's, it's exploitive in nature because you're exploiting, um, something that yeah you, you wouldn't accept these risks in a regular job environment right I, i'm questioning and that's of- not to say anything negative about i i have a such a love for sex like for sex workers and that's right. why i'm in the industry that i am so it's not to c- condemn, condemn yeah. or and, no. and even with those struggling with pornography i think it's important to note too it's like i think all these things are very shame-based and when you let things live in the dark it becomes like Absolutely. you give it more power and yeah. so like to those who's struggling with these things, um, there is a lot of hope and um, it's not to condemn you at all, but to kind of open your eyes. Cause I do think there's like a disconnect between thinking that like even pornography is like a victimless crime, but there's a lot, a lot of my girls, there was pornography taken of them that they had no consent over. Right. right. And I, to me, after working with the girls that I worked with, they were in love with their pimp. It certainly they charges were, up people to exploit old. others. It's yeah. pornography. Right. If it was consensual in the pornography, it certainly charges up people to begin to exploit yeah. others in the process. And and my, and my feeling, this is me, and then we'll get Ruth in here real quick, and then we'll pull up and get out of this quagmire I put us into. But but in in my mind, if a woman's deciding this is my power to sell my body because I want to and choose, then we as a society have done a bad way of teaching a woman to empower herself and 
it can only be detrimental in the end to her, to the future and to our community. I mean, the fact that, that, that they've been left with that as a resource and think that's the only way they can provide that to me, that's a dangerous thing for society, Ruth. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of discourse around this right now, especially with the new prevalence of like sex work that doesn't actually involve like physical contact with other people yeah. where right. you, you know, you can broadcast yourself, be right. like a cam girl, something mm -hmm. like that. And I think debates are taking place around that and also around, you know, to, to obviously a different extent, things like plastic surgery. And like, if you as a woman choose to get plastic surgery, like, is that empowering? And I think what I've seen a lot of is this idea that like, yes, it may be a choice that you're making, but thinking about the context that you're in that yeah. wants you to make that choice, right? Like it's the male gaze, it's things like, you know, we the misogyny that continues to exist in so right. many parts of our life right. that informs the decision that you're making. Like you mm -hmm. wouldn't, you know, in a vacuum, if you're alone on an island, you've never seen another human right. being. That's not something you would ever choose to do. It's because right. the context you're raised in, the yeah. things that you see. So yes, it is a choice you're making, but is it an informed choice? Is it a safe choice? Like, I think that's, yeah, that's what, is that's it a healthy debating. choice for yeah, us overall good. as a society yeah. with so much addictions? I think, so. let me pull back up on this. We're, we're going to, I'll write a note down. We're going to get into that again. Cause I, I think, I think that's all very good stuff. What you're sharing. Let me, let me ask this Haley as we, as we wrap up this guys, this is just the introduction. <laughs> this is going to be fun and intense on a bad subject, but it's going to be fun because you're going to learn so much. It's going to help you. Listen, guys, I don't care whether it's legal or not legal, stay away from anybody that is not your wife or your spouse, you know, stay away from things that stimulate things that are not of God. None of that can help benefit the community. So on the dock, we just want you to love the Lord, love your neighbor, love your spouse the way that's appropriate. And uh, you can have a lot of fun with that. Trust me. So you, you don't have to do false stim. Nobody can keep up with what they're able to paint and airbrush and do on, on TV anyway. So don't start down that path. God has a good plan and he made it real fun. I, I've had, uh, I mean, gosh, Mother Beth and I have had a good, healthy relationship for a long time. We'll keep doing that. So the Mosaic Initiative, let, let's let's get into that. No, I think healthy marriages, healthy families no, I love it. is the key to it. And I don't think we think, as Christians need to be ashamed of that. Yeah, I think that's like a big issue with church culture is the like, God. the, the, I mean, even if I say sex trafficking, I can literally s visibly see some people squirm in their yeah. seats. And all of them are having because sex because they, they all got kids. They all yeah. got, all yeah. you people out there in church land, we, we are all created by sex. Our parents had sex. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> they, hopefully they loved each other. We, I, I was a mistake. I was oh. an absolute mistake. My dad was in medical school. I was a mistake, but you know Be what? Not the best I wasn't a mistake to God. I, yeah. None of us are mistakes. We're yeah. all precious. We're all created yeah. with a plan. So get past all that. Nobody's been created other than Adam and Eve without the action of sex. You know what I'm saying? So even I, I, just, Jesus. Or, yeah. And Jesus, we'll put <laughs> Jesus in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. But here's the deal. Um, Haley, just real quick, as we wrap this up, tell us, just give the tease of you saying your thing that your long-term plans include, include oh, developing a secure online network platform where people can kind of connect yeah. and you plan to have discussion forums, support for residential shelter workers that I guess that's what you're saying to help people with the yeah. PTSDs at work. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so a lot has changed during COVID. So we're still kind of like, you know, in the middle of <laughs> doing more long-term planning and stuff. Um, even this week I made some really cool connections of like a potential mentorship program for creating like a shelter for minors and things like that. So, you know, I have a lot of dreams long-term. I think, you know, 10, 12 years down the line, I do want to open a shelter, but I want to learn as much as I possibly can before I start. Um, but yeah, I really want to focus on other but I see organizations. Your, I yeah. see your, your long-term plan yeah. to have support so for idea, residential yeah, workers. Yeah. So the idea that I would like to do at some point, it's getting like logistically, it's challenging, obviously when you have like international groups, but I really like to get some like actual, like even online therapy options for mm -hmm residential care workers and that's your interactive yeah, training curriculum to help your support try system. and give yeah that's like specialized for them because i feel like it's pretty much the people you can talk to are your coworkers, right yeah. in that area and i've been there and it's really hard and it's hard to bring home and it's important to be able to be able to process in a healthy way because you also want to serve those that you're serving the best that you can it's that like oxygen mask principle yeah. right and, and that's not to say that like the people who work are these like martyrs and and we should like 
It, like, I think that, like, you, you don't think we should sacrifice everybody that's trying to help our nation and our world get yeah. out of trafficking? You see, I can see yeah. here, I can see here that a lot of your long term has to do with networking platforms, support for people in that world, yeah. discussion forums to, based to on, vent, yeah. interactive training. And what you look like, it, it's about passionate about creating space to build interpersonal real relationships, yeah. support ideas, and you're noticing the lack of resources specifically in people working yeah. in this ministry. So it's almost like a relief yeah. system. Almost yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. yeah. And like trying to create like the standard of excellence. I think IJM just in this last year came out uh, with kind of like a standard for measurement of like success in residential facilities. And that was like hmm. kind of groundbreaking. So like, I think that there's like an assumption that we're like at a certain point in our field, but like, to give you an idea, um, I think just this year in the state of Illinois, um, you're able to prosecute up to 20 years for trafficking and we're a progressive state. So mm. like, I think it's like three years for most places. Uh. Um, so like, we're actually not probably as progressed as people may assume we are because it takes so long and it's such a arduous process, especially working in different, like all these different governments work so differently right. and there's cultural things and there's, you know, it's, it's really complex, but, um, yeah, I, it's all very based on wanting to create a more unified front for their, um, I mean, we're open to like, you know, non-faith-based organizations, obviously, but we're very, fo like, I think a lot of our partners are, are faith-based just because, you know, we have a similar view of like what exploitation is, which is really just like brokenness, you know, and a need for the Lord and, um, but it, see, it seems like, as, we, as, yeah. as I close out this segment, it seems like a lot of your work's targeted at the the strain and the burden and the overwork yeah. of yeah, organizations. Yeah, I would say that. And trying to strengthen them and yeah. keep them in the game yeah. rather than and getting excellence. them used up. Yeah, yeah I, I'd say. And, and developing yeah. a level of yeah, so and I networking. it's twofold. It's, yeah. it's one, it's, I think it's the burnout that I saw. That's what I was going to say. It's, I would say the burnout in this work's got to be huge. Yeah. And then because you're burnt out, you're it's not insane. able to cross pollinate. So you yeah. want to, you want to create cross pollinating networks yeah. and also give people a chance to get support and relief so they yeah. can get back in the game but I, and, and, yeah. and be a part of, of getting rid of this effort. Being a battle line yeah. against it. There's always been human trafficking. There probably always will be some version of it till the Lord comes back and gets us. But yeah. we certainly need to see the tide turn way around right. and the people of God need to stand up and not let it yeah. happen on our watch. And if right. you can find healing or hope for one person, I think it's all worth it, you know? Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say definitely twofold. It was, it was um, for relief, but also to expand the... Be, for the purpose of expanding our capacities. And, and I'm a really firm believer that everything that we, if we're doing something for the Lord, it needs to be with excellence. And there are a lot of like newer organizations that are great, um, but, and have great intentions. Um, and I've seen this a lot, even with, you know, just missionaries setting up. Yeah. I've, I've seen a lot, like I, I've traveled a lot with like mission groups and stuff. And I've seen a lot of really well intended programs right. end up really harming the people they're trying to help. And right. so, it's like, how do we, um, how do we become like, I, I think what it was is one point someone told me the reason they were not a faith-based organization was because the faith-based organizations had a, um, uh, oh, what's the word? A, it was kind of a stereotype that they were not going to do as excellent of work. Yeah. And that, I agree. That stayed with me. Yeah. And I was like, that should be the opposite. We should be the yeah. best in our field. We right. should be right. setting the standard and we should be providing excellent care. And how do we, how do we do that? And how do we support those who are actually working their butts off? So right. state, right. state your, state that short mission, state, mission yeah. statement, combating to combat sex trafficking and exploitation locally and globally. Well, there you heard it. That You hear the basics of what Haley's talking about. We're just getting started. It's going to be great here. I got it up on the screen. It's the Mosaic Initiative. Haley Ottolini. Ottolini. Ottolini in here in Ottolini. She says, Executive Director, Founder. And if you want to reach out to them, you can email connect at the mosaicinitiative.org. She's got a wonderful website, the mosaicinitiative.org to follow. And you can also uh, check her out on her Facebook. Facebook is at the Mosaic Initiative as well. And you can donate. She'd love to have you donate to the organization, the young organization. Always needs cash, the mosaicinitiative.org. You can go to that page, look for the donate button at the top or write backslash donate and you'll get right there. Love to see you give a donation. 
donation to her and her ministry as they get started. We'll be back in part two. <laughs> we're just getting started. Part two with the local face. We're going to talk more about uh, what we're seeing locally and <laughs> locally as part of the globe people. But we're going to really focus in on our region in, in Illinois and what we're seeing in Southern Illinois and Williams County and what you're doing in our national aspect. So we'll be back real, real soon. Haley, thank you for being with us in this first installation. You did a great job. Thanks. Yeah. I hope I did. And Ruth, Be Mother Beth, did a great job. Thanks. We'll get you guys engaged I feel a lot like a more. Mike Hogg, I'm sorry. No, no, you're the guest today. <laughs> you're the guest today. So hey, keep on joining us. We're always available at www.onthedoc.org. You can reach out to us and email us anytime at info at onthedoc.org. We'd love to have you find our platforms and find another platform. Always have a backup platform. So we're at YouTube for video and, and, and audio and Spotify and iTunes, as well as Google Podcasts. We're also available on Facebook, Roku, Rumble, and SermonNet, all on the doc with Pastor Tori. Find those channels. And we'd love to hear your social media media comments about this facebook instagram twitter and telegram remember keep things nice you can be critical you can tell us suggestions but always be nice this is a christian organization and we're about family friendly here on the dock and we'd love for you when you find our, our platforms to hit subscribe like notify and share your comments and make sure you share this podcast with other people there's going to be a lot of good information flying at you in the next couple podcasts you don't want to miss it and we would always love to have you as one of our patreon partners here you can be a partner or a sponsor check that out at my patreon at and look for the on the dock with Pastor Troy page, or you can link there through our website, www.onthedoc.org. Uh, hey, if you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you at Community Faith. If you're in the Marion area, Southern Illinois, we meet Sundays at 10, Wednesdays 630, and we have an online virtual campus at coftv.com. You can watch us on that channel, or you can watch us at Community Faith Church YouTube or Facebook page. If you don't have a church home, we would love to have you. And hey, we love having you on the dock here, and we'll be back with you real soon. So stay with us. It's going to be a great series. Get out and share this. We'll see you back soon on the dock.